in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, in today's Gospel, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is having a very serious and intense discussion with the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. And he is addressing to them a very, he's pointing on a very interesting fact, saying, if you, as you're saying that you are of the Father and you believe in God the Father, then you would understand and listen to me. And here, in continuation, he is accusing them being the sons of the devil. It's very harsh accusation. How come that the nation, the chosen, the chosen nation, ended up to follow the devil, Satan, and serve him, to have him as their father? It's heavy, isn't it? And they are accusing him to be demonized, demon-possessed. But if we look at this situation and also compare this with our own time, our own days, isn't it pretty much the same? <clears throat> we consider ourselves the chosen ones. We have the best religion, the religion that is established by Christ himself. Is not man created. And this is true, because he said, I am the truth. But how then are we ending up doing the will of the opposite of his enemy? You know, listening to this is like accusing the entire government, the armed forces, by being traitors, serving for another government, for another country. This is pretty much what he, he told them, right? Yes. You have the father, the devil. So you switched camps. Even though if you consider yourself the chosen nation, and we are considering ourselves the Orthodox Christians, which means the true worshipers, and then what happened? Something is missing in the way. We're missing somewhere. You can see, everybody is talking of truth. Everybody is considering to serve the truth and stand up for the truth. But how many are there, the truth? The truth is one. It can be mine and yours and everybody's. It's just one. But living in the 21st century, it's not about the truth, it's about rights. Oh, the right of that group, the right of another group, and so many rights that we got confused in all these rights that we lost the connection with the truth, which is God. And we are serving and feeding our ego. See, this is what the rights are, feeding our ego. Oh, you know, I'm right, and I have the right to do it. No matter what, I will do it, right? So this is what is happening. And that's why we turn our back to our Creator, to our God, and we stop serving Him. Yet we consider that we do good, and that we are Christians, and we love God. 
The same thing they did. They considered that they serve God and they love God. But see how Jesus is accusing them being the children of the devil and serving him. The ones that was chosen. Because they considered that they are doing the same thing what Abraham did. And he said, if you consider yourselves the sons of Abraham and you serve the same, same God, then you would listen to me. Because I did so many miracles, so many things that no one did in front of you. And yet you don't understand me. How come? See, this is the cry of the truth. He did not want, as he mentioned, that I didn't come on my own account. And I'm not doing this on my own account, but on the account of the one who had sent me. And I'm not doing this for my own glory, but the glory of the one who sent me. But if you, you're not serving him, you cannot see this. You cannot differentiate these things. And that's why you're hating me, because you don't understand this. You're not serving God. This is the truth. And this, unfortunately, is happening in our own times. Hatred against those that are serving God and the truth. They are marginalized because we are modern and we have different interests. And the interest that we have in our days is, as I mentioned, to feed our ego. And because of this ego, we are unfortunately sinking. We are sinking on a daily basis. We're going down to the pit and we're not even realizing, as the Jewish did not realize, that they switched camps. And instead of serving the true God and worshiping the true God, they were worshiping the father of hatred and liars. The, the beginner, because as he mentioned in this gospel, he is a murderer from the beginning. Why he said that he's a murderer? Because he, first of all, turned against God. And secondly, he attacked men and he tricked him in paradise. And because of that, the man wasn't, wasn't strong enough to stand up for the grace of God. And he took that fruit and ate out of it. And because of that, death came in our life. And that's why the devil is considered mur a murder because he killed what was most sacred, what God gave us, the grace to be in unity and communion with him, and we lost it because of that one disobedience. And now, how many times we are disobeying on a daily basis? We are turning back to God, to his commandments, and we are living according to our own will. We're not following his will anymore, anymore. And we consider that we are right. And we are bringing thousands of excuses. Oh, you know, addressing, if we are talking to the priest, oh, you know, Father, we have so many uh, responsibilities. It, it's easy for you because you are priests or monks or whatever, nuns. But for us, we have responsibilities. Well, everybody and everyone has different responsibilities. But the most important responsibility is to take care of our soul, to bring it back from where left it left, to that beauty that we lost. That's our most important, most important responsibility, to gain back what we lost. But see... We are putting other priorities in front of us 
and we think that those priorities are most important. Other is that business, other is that carrier, whatever, school, I don't know what else. Many, many other times. Or some, it can be beauty, or it can be a relationship, whatever. And we're putting that instead of Jesus Christ. Do you see how easy we are switching camps? Instead of being stable and fight for our salvation, easily we are betraying him and doing whatever it is to please our body. And we're completely ignoring, ignoring the need of our soul. And after that, afterwards, we are the same ones that we are accusing God. Oh, doesn't he see what is going on? What is happening in the world? Why are these things happening? Why he allows these things to happen? You know why? Because he loves us. And imagine as a parent, if you would be put in the position from how many you have, three, four, five, ten, whatever, to choose only one to gain life eternal. What would you say? Which one would you choose? The same thing God. Because he wants everyone to be saved. That's why he is giving us time. Not because he is ignoring, but he wants everyone to be saved. Even, even though the, there are killers, there are pedophiles or whatever, he is waiting for them to come back to their senses as the prodigal son. To understand that they are mistaken and that the love is up there and he wants everyone to turn to him to turn back to his loving arms but we are accusing him why doesn't he see yes but do we see do we understand do we love him because if we would really love him we would judge each each other and definitely we wouldn't judge him because that's judging. If you're there, why you're allowing it? What you're doing? You're judging God. And how many Christians today, they are failing. But put yourself in that shoes. Let's see how you're going to make your decision. It's difficult, right? But it's easy to, to see from the side and to judge others. So let's not fail into that. Let us be obedient to God <coughs> and His commandments. And let us, let us work on our own spiritual growth. Because as you see, we're missing a lot. Let us see, are we truly believers? Do we truly believe in Him? And if we do believe in him, then can, in us cannot be any hatred. Because many times we cannot find peace in our own family, the couple among them, or between parents and, and uh, their, their children. But we say that we love God. Or neighbors. Or even in church. Many times we're not talking with that person because we don't like something, his appearance, his whatever. And uh, we're not talking because our ego is greater than the love and the peace among us. So if we are not pious, we're not humble, we do not love, we have hatred, then we, which one do we are, are we serving? So as he pointed to the Jewish, you serve the devil and your devil's sons. It's a very difficult and hard, hard sentence. But we have to understand. We have to realize where are we standing and with, in which camp are we serving. If we really want to be saved, then the way is piety. Remember what the psalmist says, the humble heart. That's when we will humble our heart and we, and we will put others before us 
I'm not worthy. I'm the worst. So, and try to make others to be happy, to rejoice. It's not about us, but see, we want us to be happy. Every, everyone to bow before us, you know, to please us, to make us happy, even in the couple. The same thing. Oh, remember you did that to me, or you said that, or whatever, uh, 10 years ago, or when we were still dating, or whatever. You know, we, if you remember those things, then you don't have really love. Because forgetting, forgiving is forgetting. You never bring up whatever it was in the past. That, what, that means I forgive you. That means I will never bring it up. But for us, it's difficult to erase those, right? We want others to forgive us and to forget, but we don't want us to forgive and forget. So let us try, my dear ones, to imitate God and to follow God and follow His commandments and be truly stay on His camp and serve God and be the children of God. Because we saw and we are seeing miracles happening every day. Because today, it's a great thing that we have a piece from the Epitrahelion, this is the Epitrahelion, of Saint, newly canonized Saint Evmenius. He was, uh, April 24th, I think he was canonized as a saint. So this is actually first feast for him as a saint. And uh, thank you to our dear brother here that uh, he was able to bring that uh, piece of, from here's Epitrahelion, to be with us and to be able to venerate and get the blessing of Saint Emmanuel. So this saint, it's a great example for us, very pious, very humble. He lost his father when he was only two years old. As his sister is saying, when he was little, as Saint Nicholas, Wednesdays and Fridays, he, he refused to take his mother's breast. He was fasting from his childhood. So growing up, at very young age, he went to the monastery. The monastery was only the elder and two other monks that was blind. So he served, he was doing all the chores at the monastery, everything, for three years, and after three years, he became a monk and he continued. Pretty much every, the monastery, the entire monastery was on him. On top, taking care of the old monks. And it, the time came for him to go to serve the army. Even though he was a monk, he went and served. But the, the, his captain knew that he was a monk and was allowing him to take the time to go to the chapel of the, that they have had specially uh, there, and he was doing his mon uh, monthly uh, routine. At some point, he got sick, he had fever, 41. For a couple days, they sent him to Thessalonica to the hospital they couldn't find what he had. They sent him in Athens, and they found out that he had leprosy. It was at the beginning stage. So they sent him to the hospital that was dedicated for leprosy in uh, Athens. He completely was cured, no scars, no nothing. Was completely cured. But he decided to stay to serve his fellow brothers, and he served his entire life at that hospital. Later, he was ordained deacon and priest, and uh, he passed away in 2001. Recently, it's uh, one of the modern saints, but the love that he had for, for his fellow men, you have no idea with such, and Saint Nikiforos, the lepers, was one of the, the patients of that hospital that he took care of. So, now you understand the connection. It's a great saint, and we 
are blessed to have him with us today here and to beg him to intercede for us to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to him be the glory of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit both now and ever and unto the ages of ages Amen. God bless you all Christ is risen Thank you.